Hello everybody, thanks for joining this special episode of Sam's Device Advice. Today we're going to be talking about the EQAO test. So uh, that's actually coming up this week from when I'm filming this. Uh, we have the OSSLT starting this week and then the primary junior test coming up later on. So I wanted to give a little walkthrough of how to share the Google Docs version of this test. I've had quite a few questions about this in the past, so I want to show you my method of doing this. There doesn't seem to be a, a mandated method, let's say. So let's walk through how I've been doing it so far and what I've found to be the most secure, at least. So let's jump to my desktop here. Um, so this is, again, just in my personal account. This isn't in my school account. So what we're looking at is just all fake. Um, please don't report me to the blue pages because I don't actually have the OSSLT in here early. Um, so what I do is I create an EQAO drive every year. Um, I end up deleting this afterwards. And the EQAO drive underneath of it, I'll create folders for OSSLT and for the primary junior, as well as the math, if I have it. Um, this year I only had, actually I did have students writing the math test, ignore that. So we're gonna look at the OSSLT. So I've set this up in the way that I've done it in the past. So my subfolders for OSSLT, you can see here. So in this case, I'm saying that I have four students who are gonna use the Google Docs version of the OSSLT test. So I create a folder for each of the students and I also add their uh, package I need them or to the, um, the, fo the folder name. This is more just for me and for my organization. This, you don't need to do this necessarily. Um, in the past, I've also just put the students' uh, initials just to try to keep this as uh, anonymous as possible, but nobody else is gonna see these folders other than you, so it doesn't really matter what you name them. Um, and then I have, uh, I download or get the versions of the Google Docs shared to me. Usually it's somebody in your school board who's designated as the contact person. They will then have to share it to you or you'll get it from the EQAO site. They've changed it up a couple times over the last two years. So, um, but however you get these, you're going to have your two versions of, uh, so you're going to have your booklet one and your booklet two. Um, so I just renamed them uh, booklet one master, booklet two master. So from here, this is what I do. So I take my two master copies of the test, I right click on them and I click make a copy. Um, I like to make sure I always have the original version of the test there. Then what I'll do is I'll take my copies uh, and I'm gonna drag them into a student's folder. Um, so now I have in Karen's folder, I have this uh, version of the test. So what I'll do though, is I'm gonna rename these ones because um, Karen doesn't need to know that it's the master. So usually what I'll do is I'll put in her booklet number, which I think I had her as, as uh, ending in nine. And then I'll name this booklet one. And then I do the same thing to my second booklet. So put her package number and then booklet two. So do this for each of your subsequent students. So you can see I've done Johnny um, so again, I make sure that his package ID number is the same and I'll check that in my EQAO list as well. Um, and again, just for verification, this is not an actual OSSLT test. This is just an example file I've created for this. Um, so once you're ready to go, you have all of your booklets uh, created, each of your students have it in uh, their folder ready to go, and they're all separate files. I can't stress that enough. Um, then the morning of the OSSLT, when you're ready to go, you're going to go through and you're going to share booklet one of each student's folder to that student. So in this case, this is Johnny. So I would right click on the, uh, Johnny's booklet one. I'd click on share. And then in this case, I'm just going to use again, one of my other, um, email accounts and I could hit send here, but you don't want to yet. You want to go through one additional step. Um, down in the bottom right, you're going to see advanced under your share settings. I'm going to click there and I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. So these uh, options down here where it says owner settings, these are very important. Um, and it's the first box that we're looking for that says prevent editors from changing access and adding new people. Um, you can obviously see why this would be an important step to choose. So by clicking on this, you make sure that little Johnny can't share um, his version of his test to anybody else. He could technically make a copy to do it, but he's not going to do that. Um, that's where you see the second option if you have them as commenters or viewers, where you can stop them from being able to download it or make a copy. But obviously if it's a, if the student's set up as a commenter, he can't write the test. 
So as an editor, this makes sure that the student can't add anyone else to their file. So now that I've made sure I'm sharing this to the correct student, I've clicked off prevent editors. I'll click save changes and then we're ready to go. Um, you can decide whether you want to notify them or not. It's just going to send an email to their Gmail account, which most students don't check anyways. Um, so I'm going to click OK and OK again. And now we're ready to go. So little Johnny can log into his account and he's going to have access to the OSSLT booklet one. Um, at the end of the first session, when the students are finished, um, then you're just going to do the reverse. You're going to right click on the document. You're going to go to share. Um, and then I'm going to go down to advanced again. And here you can see the X beside the student's name. And I can click the X to remove them. So I'll do that here. I'll hit save changes. And now this means that little Johnny no longer has access to this. Worst case scenario, if it's still open in his account, um, this will now create it as a view only file. But as soon as he closes it, he won't have access to this uh, document. Unless one thing is turned on. Now this is an important thing to check. Some school boards have this feature turned on by default um, and some don't, so this might not apply to you. But when you go and right click the folder or the uh, file, sorry, to share, um, make sure up on the top where it says get shareable link um, is turned off. So I hover over uh, this link and it says turn link sharing on. So that means right now it's turned off. If this is turned on by default, you will need to go into this button um, and then you're going to click where it says anyone can click the link and you're going to turn this off and then hit done. The reason you want to do this is that it want, even if the students finish the test and you removed their access to it, if link sharing is still turned on, the student can still find a view only version of their test and they're shared with me. Um, so for confidentiality's sake, uh, you want to make sure that the student no longer has any access to this test when they're finished, even just viewing it. So you need to make sure that when you share it, that your default settings for link sharing are turned off. Again, this might not ap apply to you, but it's a good thing to check when you're sharing your first booklet. Um, and then when your student's ready to write the second booklet, do the exact same thing. So go into each folder. So in this case, let's go to uh, Karen and do it with hers. So for Karen's, for booklet two, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna to go to share, I'm gonna type in Karen's email address, which in my case is just gonna be the same kid's address. It's uh, ready to go for editing. My link sharing is turned off, so I don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna click advanced. I'm gonna scroll down to prevent editors from changing access, and I'm gonna hit save changes, and I'm gonna hit okay and okay. So now Karen can start writing booklet two when she's ready. Um, as far as once the students are finished with it, you can decide if you want to print it for them or if the students are going to print it wherever they're working from. Um, some schools don't have Chromebooks set up to print easily, so it might be easier if you do this on your end, um, but that's up to you. But you can print it and uh, you should be good to go. Uh, I've been really impressed with the Google Docs versions of these EQAO tests and the team that's putting them together is doing a really good job of making them as, as, as accessible as possible, um, even putting in bookmarks for some questions. Um, so that's the extent of what we did. So as a recap, I have a folder for each of my EQAO tests. In each folder, I have a subfolder for each student and then I have the master copies of these tests. I select both of them. I make a copy of them and then I rename them for each student and make sure I have their booklet ID in the name. And then um, I go to share them and I make sure I set it to prevent editors from changing access. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email, sam at samgoving.com. But I wish you a very speedy and effective and efficient uh, EQAO uh, testing week. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Cheers.